Why is the gospel according to John different from the other three gospels? Tell us about different themes of the gospel of John. For example, light and darkness. Well, gospel of John, another rich, rich gospel. One of the uh, writers on the gospel of John said something like this, that the gospel of John is such that a small baby can safely wade in but an elephant can drown. It is accessible to everybody and yet it is very, very deep. Now the moment we open this gospel, we realize, yes, it is different. It is connecting to the story of the Old Testament very differently from the other three gospels. That's why we have a technical word for the first three gospels. We call it the synoptic. Sun together, optic to see. We can see those three gospels separately. This gospel is the autoptic gospel. You have to look at it by itself. It is different because God likes difference. That's why I am so different from you. I am glad you are not like me. We are so different. All of us are different. So this gospel is beautifully different, unique. See the beginning. In the beginning was the word. The moment you read that in the beginning was the word, you are thinking of the first line of scripture that is in the beginning. God created. And we are reminded of that creation of God. So using that language, in the beginning was the word. Word was with God. Then he says something amazing. Word was God. Now a good reading that I wish we had time to study this in a Greek class. But there are some people who mistranslate this and say the, and the word was a God. Friends, what John in the very beginning is saying, this word I'm going to talk about is God. Not only that, in verse 18 he will say he has revealed the only one who has revealed the Father to us is this God who has become flesh, verse 14. So he starts with this high sounding, everybody's ears are tuned to the book of Genesis. And then, very interesting, he has seven days of creation also. That's how it appears here. For example, from verse 19, after the prologue, he starts off and says, this is what happened with John. So the first day is there. Do you notice in verse 29, it says the next day. Okay, that's like the second day. I mean, by now we know John is not talking chronology. Because we already said in chapter 2, the, the action in the temple is not in the beginning, it is afterwards. So this is carefully crafted the next day. You see that? Verse 29. And then verse 35, day 3, the next day. Then, uh, 43, the next day, that is day 4, and look at 2-1 on the third day, seventh day, and Jesus does his first sign or miracle on the seventh day. Wow! So basically, John is also saying, this is the new creation that Jesus is bringing in. So, but he does it very differently in a different style, in a different way. And therefore, his perspective is different from the other writers. It's a post-resurrection perspective. Already, right in the beginning, he has told you, Jesus, this one, is God. He was God. First verse. So he doesn't wait to tell you later on. Yes, it is revealed later on. You know, Thomas will say, my Lord and my God, all that is there but from the right in the beginning. So perspective-wise, John is different. So John, as it has been traditionally called, is based, this gospel is based on the eyewitness account of somebody who is very enigmatically called the beloved disciple. Now, who is this beloved disciple? My goodness, scholars have written so much about it. Of course, the traditional view, I still want to hold on to that, maybe right, is that it is John, son of Zebedee. But there are others who think it could be John, another John, John the Elder. It's such a common name. Or there are other arguments for maybe it's James, the brother of Jesus. Or there is a very good argument saying it is Lazarus. Very interesting. So, 
things in the Bible we don't always know the authorship of. We go with the authority. Right? So many books in the Bible, Judges, 1 Kings, 2 Chronicles, all those are written by God's people. We don't know exactly who wrote it. Uh, even the book of Job is not written by Job. Right? So we realize that this beloved disciple, his witness is, uh, this whole gospel is based on his witness. But looks like when you come to the end, the author's hand comes up. And he said, verse 24, the last chapter, this is the disciple who testifies to these things and who wrote them down. We know that his testimony is true. That means now the writer who is putting this together is maybe a follower of this beloved disciple or a friend or a community, whatever. And, you know, in scholarship, we may debate about this. But all this is put together and traditionally it is supposed to come from John's, uh, the disciple. And what is his purpose? He makes his purpose very clear. At the end of chapter 20, um, chapter 20, verse 31, he will say, Many things Jesus did, but this I am writing. These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. One of the things about John is he does not use the kingdom language so much. There is a kingdom coming. Nicodemus, he says, you cannot enter the kingdom, right? But generally, he prefers to use the eternal life. The Messiah is bringing eternal life to people. So that's how he looks at it. He arranges it differently. There are miracles, he calls them signs. So there are seven signs. Then he has statements of Jesus like the I am sayings. I am the good shepherd. I am the gate of the sheepfold. I am the resurrection and the life. And so he arranges the gospel slightly differently. Chapters 1 to 12 very often called the book of signs. And chapters 13 to 21, very often called the book of glory, where Jesus goes to his glory on the cross. So again, a beautiful gospel. Let me just say this before I forget. For those of our listeners who would like to learn some of these things, how these gospels are crafted and arranged, it's really beautiful. And one of the best places to learn that are the simple short, very beautifully done videos of Bible Project. So if you don't know, to the friends who are listening, if you don't know Bible Project, just type on YouTube, Bible Project Matthew, Bible Project Mark, Luke, John, and other books of the Bible. There are hundreds of videos. And by the way, they have, some of those are now translated into some of our languages. So if you type Hindi, you may find some Hindi videos. So each gospel is unique and beautiful.